the first thing we're going to take a look at is what happens then when we go from a sequence, like what we did the other day, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so we have a common difference of 1. What happens if instead of wanting to find the terms, we want to add them all up? So here's what I mean. Instead, what if the task was to say, what's the answer to this question, all the way up to the number 20? So one strategy I'm going to show you would look like this. I'm going to take all these numbers and I'm going to pair them up. Maybe I'll add a couple extra in here just so you can see. So the end of it would be 18, 19, 20. So I'm going to pair them up like this. 1 and 20, 2 and 19, then I'll go 3 and 18, and I would keep going that way all the way through. So the pairs that I'm going to have are 1 and 20, then 2 and 19, and 3 and 18. Now I don't know if you notice what I'm doing here. It would go all the way down and we'd end up with 10 and 11 at the very end of it. But there's a, there's a reason I did that. And if you look vertically, 1 and 20, those add up to 21. 2 and 19, that's 21. So we get 21 all the way through here. So now instead of having all these different numbers to add up, I'm actually adding up the same number, right? But the other thing you have to remember is I don't have 20 terms anymore. I've actually split them in half, right? Because 10 are on top and then 10 are on the bottom. So I have 21 is the number that keeps getting repeated instead of all these different ones, but it only happens 10 times in this example. So of course, we can quickly find an answer to that 21 times 10 it would be 210. So that's the way we could come up with a sum for a sequence, and that's so you can kind of see where it comes from, is it's this idea of pairing the first and the last term, and then going all the way back in until we hit the middle. So we can go even further with it, like what if I wanted the first 100 numbers in this arithmetic sequence, where the common denominator, sorry, common difference is 4. Um, if I want to know the first 100, I, what is the 100th term, right? So the hundredth term here, like I'm not going to be able to pair them up unless I know what it is. Okay, But if you remember the formula from last day, it's going to be our first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. Oops, that's 397, sorry. So I get 397. So now, if I wanted to work out um, the same strategy, I would be pairing them up vertically with 1 and 397. Then I'd be going with 5 and the previous term from 397. Well, if the common difference is 4, that means I backed up by 4, so I'd be at 393. So I'll do this one more time. I'd have 9 and this time 389. And this would just keep going. Let's see that they all add up to 398. So 1 and 397, that's good. Yep, so far, so good. They all add up to 398. But the question again is, how many times do they add up to the number 398? And remember, if there's 100, but I'm pairing them, that means I only end up using 50 terms. So the answer to this question, I could get by going 398 times 50. And that's 19,900. Now, you can all, of course, use that strategy if that's the way you want to do it, but that's to help you find out where this formula I'm about to hit you with comes from. So the formula for finding um, the sum of, of an arithmetic sequence, it looks like this. Whoops, let's try and make that a little neater. Now, why is that? Well, if you think about what we did, we took the, really the only one we need is, we only need one pair, because all the pairs that we chose, they add up to the same thing, right? They add up to 398, 398, 398. They add up to 21, 21, 21, 21. So as long as we pick one pair to add together, we'll get that number we're looking for. So the easiest ones to find are the ones we already have a formula for, the first and the last. So like I did here, T100, I found the hundredth term, and then I can use it in the pair. First term plus the hundredth term. So that's 
In our case, that would be 1 and 397 for the last question. In the previous one, that's like when we added together 1 and 20. Okay? So that gives me what the pairs add up to. And what I have here is the number of pairs. Because if I, tell, I told you, for example, that I was going to have 100 values to add up, then when I pair them, 100 divided by 2, that's where the 50 came from when we did it before. So this formula here will get us the same result uh, as what we did before with pairings. And now, of course, we can go one better because we do have a formula for Tn. So what I mean is we can take that and we can put it right in where Tn used to be. So that means I get n over 2. And Tn, I'm going to write that as a plus n minus 1d. So this piece here, that used to be Tn. If I collect my like terms, I'll end up with the same formula, just another way of writing it. There's two a's, n minus 1d. So depending on the information you have in the problem, one of the two may be better for you. So we'll take a look um, at the next couple examples so that you can see which way to apply the formula is most convenient. So in this first one, uh, 5, 8, 11, all the way up. I'm trying to find the sum of 20 terms. So if I look and see, which one of these two formulas do I want to use? Well, I don't know what the last term is. I could go and calculate it, but I don't have this value here. So, like I said, it's not a big deal to get around and calculate it, but in this one I know all the values. I can see that the common difference here is 3. So I know the common difference is 3. I can see the first term is 5. And I know that I'm adding up 20 terms. So everybody in this formula is there. OK, so that formula might look messier, but it's actually ready to go for us, and we can use it right away. So the sum of 20 terms in this instance is going to be 20 divided by 2, 2 times 5 plus, uh, that'll be 19 then times 3. So that's going to be um, 10 and 10 plus, uh, let's see here, 57. So that ends up with 10 times 67. So that's 670. So that's what I end up with as the sum for this uh, arithmetic sequence that we started with here. So we'll try again on the next one. Uh, you, you may want to just pause here for a second and try it by yourself, but I'm going to work it through. It'll be a good way for you to test if you're on the right track. Okay, so in the second example, if I look at the pieces here, I'm actually dropping by 2 each time, so I'm subtracting 2. So I know the common difference is negative 2, and the first term is negative 6. And again, I'm looking for 20 terms, as it was asked for in the problem. So the sum of 20 terms in this problem will be 20 divided by 2, 2 times the first, plus 1 less, so 19, than the number of terms, times the common difference, which is negative 2. So this will end up as 10, negative 12, minus 38. So it'll be 10 times negative 40, sorry, negative 50. So we end up with negative 500. Okay. So another way, again, like I said, you may have to apply this formula is, is if it's presented differently. This one, it doesn't tell us how many values we have. So that gives us a good clue right away when we're thinking about which of these two formulas am I supposed to use. Um, this one here, it has the last term built into it, this 201. So it's probably going to be convenient that we use this first one because I know the first number is 5 and I know the last number is 201. Okay? But unfortunately, we're not quite off the hook here. We still don't know how many terms there are. So let's try to figure that out. Um, the common difference here is 4. 
So I'm going to use this information I have so far to figure out how many terms I have. So what I know is term n is 201, and that's supposed to be equal to the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference, which for us is 4. So if I start to rearrange this, I can figure out what term number uh, 201 is. So this is going to say, um, let's see here. So this is going to say 196 is n minus 1 times 4. Um, so we could say that 49 is equal to n minus 1. So running out of space here, n has to be equal to 50. Now I have enough information to solve the problem. So I know I'm looking for the sum of 50 terms. And I'm going to use the other formula, as I mentioned, because I already know Tn and A, so it makes sense to use this one here. So this will be 50 divided by 2. And this is the pair. It'll be 2 plus, sorry, that's a 5, not a 2. It'll be 5 plus 201. 201, there. So this is 25 times 206, which is 5150. So again, I'd encourage you to try the, this next one here uh, on your own. Just pause your video, and then uh, you can see how I worked it through. Make sure you're on the right track. So again, I'll start by listing out what I know about the problem. And I have to figure out what n equals. I don't know what n is. So let's make a little equation to help us. Negative 386 is the first term, plus n minus 1 times the common difference. So after I subtract these out, I end up with a 99 is equal to n minus 1. So I know that term has to be the hundredth term. Okay. So now I have enough information. I can use it to solve the problem. I'm looking for the sum of 100 terms here. So it'll be, whoops, pen's a little sticky. There, 100 divided by 2 times uh, the first term, which is 10 plus the last term, which is negative 386. So I end up at 50 times negative 376. And that's going to give me negative 18,800. Okay, so the rest of the lesson that we need to discuss, we can do that uh, face to face, and uh, we're done.